Attempted Mongol invasions of Japan in the 13th century had a late developing but far-reaching impact on the political stability of the island nation. These events ultimately helped bring about a period of strife that came to be known as the Age of the Country at War, Japan's Great Civil War. In this tumultuous era, individual samurai took on greater importance than ever before. Samurai didn't fight for free. They expected rewards for their efforts. After all, weapons, armor, horses, and servants were expensive. Every act required compensation. And if there was an obligation, it was for lords to adequately compensate their followers. A lord that was too stingy could not garner enough support, and the warriors would leave him. Rewards usually came in the form of parcels of captured enemy territory. But there were no newly conquered lands to be had at the end of the Mongol invasions. Indeed, there was no plunder at all. Many powerful warlords had gone to great expense to defend the country, and neither the shogun nor the imperial court offered any compensation. Resentment grew, and eventually many warlords decided that since there wasn't much reward in serving the organized government, they would do as they pleased. By the late 1400s, power had shifted into the hands of a group of major regional landowners and warlords called daimyo. When you literally translate that term, it means great name. It just means great person. And it emerges in the 1400s and really the 1500s as a title warlords give themselves. Prior to this, these influential men were happy using titles given to them by the imperial court or by the shoguns. But those days were past. You're a daimyo pretty much because you call yourself a daimyo. So it really marks the decentralization of authority that happens in the 1400s and 1500s. People aren't looking to central authority anymore to say, you get to command men. You get to command men, and you get a title because thousands of men follow you. That's good enough. The daimyo essentially became independent rulers of small autonomous states, each one trying to swallow up his neighbors. Japan entered a state of almost constant civil war that would last for nearly 100 years and affect virtually every citizen. At the top of the social hierarchy, brother battled brother. Sons tried to depose their fathers. Nephews assassinated their uncles. Nothing seemed to matter if it got in the way of political ascendancy. Even lower-ranking samurai often change sides from fight to fight. If you change sides opportunistically, then you're a traitor. But if you're faced with the threat of death and you don't flinch, and you show that I'm willing to die to defend my lord, I'm willing to die fighting even after my lord is dead, you have this opportunity to say, okay, change sides, it's okay. I knew you were willing to die, but I'm not gonna ask that of you. Everyone from farmers to merchants became militarized and could be called to battle for their regional lord at a moment's notice. Even women got into the act. In at least a few instances, women actually donned armor, mounted horses, and charged into the fray. And if you think about it, warfare dominated by mounted archers uh, is not disadvantageous to women at all because they're light, they're agile, um, as long as they have the strength to shoot the bow and arrow, they, they can perform just as well as men. <laughs> 